Welcome to I'd Back That Kickstarter, the RPG version. I'm Glory Hound, and I'm here with... Brendan Carrion, Full Metal RPG, what up? And... Adam, also Full Metal RPG. That's right. So, I had to bring in some experts for RPGs. We also upgraded our mics, so hopefully we hear, like, sound really super crystal clear to you guys. We have Dr. Glory Hog in the channel already. I already saw Walters. Thank you guys for showing up. Battle Cry and actually MM, which I don't think we've seen in a little bit. M -M. So I'm super excited. Who's MM? MM is a longtime listener, so I'm super excited. Oh, yeah. First time caller. Yeah. <laughs> long time <laughs> listener, first time caller. And MM is saying, I just backed a bunch of RPG Zines. zines. I said zines before, guys. I apologize. Don't know about that. On the fence about dungeons and dilemmas, if you know anything about it. Okay, so that's a good one. Maybe we'll circle back to that. I, I definitely... So, zines were not a huge thing whenever I was into RPGs fully, so I want to know all about them and, like, what what's the deal with them. Well, they kind of disappeared for a little bit because um, the kind of DIY sort of spirit of the role-playing industry kind of vanished for a little while. Like in the late 80s, early 90s, people had kind of almost sort of like just handed control of content creation over to the big companies. And you had like TSR and White Wolf and, you know, all the other ones pumping out lots and lots of very like high-grade polished product. And so the, the whole zine industry in record stores about, you know, politics and music and identity, those all disappeared along with the... Uh, the gaming ones as well. And then they kind of started coming back uh, as this sort of sense of like the kind of democratization of being creative has right. sort of returned to these industries. And uh, with Kickstarter actually funding them, dedicating like a whole month to just RPG zines, now we're seeing like crazy stuff. That's exciting though because I mean, RPGs are all about that creativity and getting creativity from different people and different people home growing things and stuff like that. And so I'm glad to see that things like that are coming back and that it's becoming a community project, not just a single entity controls everything sort of project. So I'm oh, excited totes. about all that. Totes, for sure. I did a zine and I released mm -hmm. one episode of it and uh, issue two is two years late. <laughs> It's still on the way. Don't give up hope, kids. There's nothing have... more punk than that, right? Okay. And, hey, That's we, the punkest thing of all. We have Kabuki Kid in the channel and Jimmy Hudson, which, which is saying, I know zero about RPGs. This is a perfect place yeah, welcome. to learn more. Okay. And we have Alan. Thanks so much for hanging out with us. Alan, do you actually, uh, do you also play RPGs? Like, I know you're saying not much, but have you played some before? I want to know. Alan actually came out to us uh, a few weeks ago, and like we gamed with him and everything. So oh, it was great! Really fun. So nice. cool, right. cool. That's always fun. Quick little thing on you guys. Oh. So you guys are with Full Metal RPG. Yes. And I specifically picked you guys to be in this show and on this channel and talk about these because of your involvement in the community. Like I know you guys from a community base that we're all in in Arizona, mm -hmm. and can you guys tell me a little bit about your background? Because I know that you draw and you write. We both do those things, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. We're actually childhood friends, so we knew each other That's in so awesome. high school, and then we just started <laughs> role playing together, and we never really stopped. And uh, then we hit this certain moment where we were like, "Hey, we're both like old guys now. We should like maybe do something with our time." And we started uh, doing podcasts and uh, and like writing games. I don't know. What do you think? So, what do you think about that? We just hit that stride where it was we're two guys who are middle-aged and we're friends and we have strong opinions about things. Podcast. Yeah. And you were like, yeah. you looked into each other's eyes yeah. and you were like, let's podcast let's together. Podcast. <laughs> let's let's podcast, podcast together. Yeah, yeah. That's what you do. Because well. everybody wants to hear what we have to think, clearly. Oh, yeah, right? for sure. Well, you guys are very informative in the community, so I always Ooh. appreciate you guys showing up and hanging out with us and everything. Yeah, likewise. So the first RPG that we're going to be talking about today is Altered Carbon, the role-playing game. And I actually have the music playing over here, so I'm taking that out. Okay. And this is by Hunter's Entertainment. It is based off of a book series and now a Netflix series as well. It has a little bit of cyberpunk in it, a little bit of detective story in it. It's all about people and like cheating death. And this has a hazard system also available. So the well is the main mechanic of the RPG. Can you guys tell me a little bit about the hazard system? Sure. So there's actually a video on their page where Becca Scott of uh, 
Geek and Sundry. Geek and Sundry. Yeah. Yep, Geek and Sundry. Scott will, because I watch her Warhammer videos all the time, very informative. She will walk you through what the hazard system is and why they use it. So it's a multi-dice system where your proficiency level uh, determines the die that you get. The D4 is the best die. The D12 is the worst die. It's a roll under system. Right. They did a roll under system, so there's always a chance that you can succeed on a roll. So if the if the uh, storyteller, games master, sets the difficulty of a roll at, say, 2, which would be very difficult, even with a D12, there's still a chance that you can succeed at it. Not much of a chance, but there's still a chance. Whereas with a D4, it's 50-50. I actually like this hazard system because it makes complete sense. If you have a D4, like, obviously your chances are going to be a whole lot better than that D12. <clears throat> it just, it makes a lot of sense personally to me. Right. So, Brendan, what were your, what were your first impressions of this particular campaign and Oof. system? Well, my, per my first impressions are that it's incredibly slick. It's, like, obvious that a ton of money and time has gone into this thing. Uh, they, while the, the, the property is based on the novels of Richard K. Morgan, you can tell that, um, they're really drawing very heavily from the Netflix series. Uh, they give you a, a quick start that you can use, and usually a quick start is like 10, 20 pages. The downloadable, free downloadable oh, yeah. quick start here is it's like huge. 65 pages. Huge. I was like, this is a whole <laughs> role-playing game. Right. So you can, you could, you could really do something with just what um, you get for free right on the on the Kickstarter. Uh, but you can see the, a lot of I images of like Joel Kinnaman, a lot of the very like high uh, kind of production value materials straight from the show are in the book right away. It's obvious that this is like a very, very, very professional, slick production. Mm -hmm. What about you, Adam? Yeah, it looks really great, and I like what they're doing with the hazard system and uh, the luck rolls and the kind of things that they've done with that, where the, you'll get a die for luck, and then if you roll a one uh, on each die, your normal die and your luck die, then you achieve like an exceptional success. And there's a degree oh, of success. Successes. Yeah, there's, a, the there's a degree of success <laughs> system too, where it's like if the target number is six and you roll a two, then you've got four degrees of success because you beat the number by four. And so there's a lot of really interesting things that they're doing with it. Clearly, it's very polished. Clearly, they're taking a lot of the uh, art and aesthetic from the Netflix series. If you watch that video, a lot of the intro. Mm -hmm. Right. Pictures and everything are from the actual Netflix series, the first episode, second episode. So we do have some questions here. Somebody, I know they were asking if this was a good starter. Okay, yeah, Maybe what that do was you Alan, think? Yeah. yeah, what do you think of? I'm sorry. What do you all think about this as an entry level RPG? And that's a really good question because, like, some of our, my viewers, a lot of my viewers are mostly board gamers. So what do you guys think about that? What is your love of the? sci-fi cyberpunk genre and that would kind of determine if this is a good entry point for you or not the common entry point for most people is tolkien-esque kind of fantasy like dungeons and dragons because that's what a lot of people think of when they think of rpgs and what they want to play when they play an rpg as far as the system i think this makes a lot of sense to me i grok it on kind of an intuitive level so i don't think it would be a bad entry point mm -hmm. for anyone and there is the quick start so you can always download it read through it and go hey do I like this? Is this something that I would want to interact with? It's There's not going to be any buyer beware, right? You're getting right. a lot of stuff up front that you can kind of make a decision based off of. Right. And this quick start, like I paused on it right here. It's right here, guys. So, And you guys were not kidding. It is a 60-page yeah. like mm -hmm. book, and it pretty much tells you everything aside from like giving you... The details, I guess, maybe of factions and stuff like that, like the full world de details, it really tells you everything in the mechanics you need to know. I don't believe it tells you anything about uh, weaponry or anything like that. But yeah, you do get a real good look at how the mechanics are going through. Like you have your sleeve that you're in and those are going to be stats and then you have like your mental stats and then how they interchange whenever you're switching bodies and everything. So that was really good. They did a good job of that. And the nice thing about it, too, is because of the book series and the Netflix series is you have oh, a wealth of yeah. world information right. already right. at your fingertips that you can interact with if you need inspiration or you kind of need an idea of how does this look, how does this feel, what kind of themes and stories should I be running with this game. So let's see here. We have used to play an RPG that came along, D&D Cyberpunk, Torg, Iron Hedge, and Shadowrun. MM says, Hyper RPG just sent 
or just did a one shot for this with Ivan Van Norman as GM. That's right. So Ivan Van Norman is part of the entity that owns this, I believe. So that's why he's because that's actually who approached us was like, hey, this cool Altered Carbon RPG is coming out. And I was like, oh, tell me more. Like, I'm excited. I like Altered Carbon. The other thing I really wanted to talk to you guys about, because this is probably something you really only see with maybe like a critical role style campaign. What do you guys think about all this crazy swag they have going on at the bottom of this? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I there's a lot of swag, especially yeah. this Hello Unicorn carrying case. I was like, uh, I mean, what look, is that? Look, here, here's the thing. Like, I've bought into a lot of Kickstarters, and I know that that Kickstarter feeling where you're like reaching into your wallet and you're like, oh, if I just go up 20 more bucks, look at all the extra value I get. And then you've like, you know, split with $500 on like a role playing game and like a ton of peripherals. Uh, but at the end of the day, like, do you end up using those things? Like, do those, those things end up really being value added? Uh, now, when I kickstart a role playing game, I look for the soft cover copy because I'm going to use it. I'm going to abuse it in the best of all possible worlds. I'm going to have this game in my backpack, carrying it around. Right. And like, I am probably not going to use a billion little doodads. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm, I mean, the special dice, they look so cool on the screen, but then they just go in a box somewhere. You well, know? the big thing for them was this huge, like, player oh my God. board thing. Like, oh, they. Oh, sweet yeah, Lord. Yeah, I was like, yeah. oh my gosh. That thing looks like, heavy. Yeah, I don't know about and that. And then look at these dice, guys. <laughs> like, they're light up crazy dice. Like, yeah, well, who, no, they're not light up, probably, but they are crystal light. Like, I mean, geez, it's... I mean, they're very cool, and that's the cool thing, right, is expensive dice, but uh, when I was at Gen Con this year, um, there were, or last year, rather, there were, like, really great Vampire the Masquerade with Edition dice, and, I mean, they were they were gorgeous, they were stunning, but I didn't want to pay, like, $100 for a set, you know? Oh, hey, here's an interesting thing. Walter's saying, I wish there was an RPG that works well for two players. Do you guys have any quick suggestions for Oh, man, there's, like, Walter? a whole there's a whole world of, like, um, solo player and then, like, two-player RPGs coming out. Single like, uh, Moment is a two-player game. That oh, I that is. Yeah, Single that's Moment, good okay. Uh, that's a samurai... You're two samurai facing off against each other, and then, and then you go back how you got to that point where you're on the bridge or in the cherry blossom grove where you're ready to, to hack at each other with your katanas. Well, and now, was Iron Sworn? Is that because is it called Iron Sworn or Iron Born? I can't even remember. That's like a PBTA mm. hack, and that's for very small tables too. There's also one we're going to talk about today that actually uses a board system, and it is GMless. So that might be a better option mm. as well. That's so. a three-player one. There's also like Disciples of Bone and Shadow is a single-player RPG. Yeah. Yeah. There's a couple different yeah. options. There's a lot of different stuff out there if you, that's what you're really looking to yeah. get into. If you're looking for like something that is not like a traditional game i recommend going on itch.io and looking on their sideboard they have a on the left hand column there's a thing that says physical games because itch is really for uh indie video games but they have this thing called physical games and you can get pdfs of role-playing games that are either very very niche or they're currently being designed and you can find all kinds of stuff on there. Like, like this itch.io yeah, itch.io. All right. And um, I uh, was on there, and I saw, like, a ton of two-player games. I mean, oh, that's really? really my, oh, yeah. That's not really my thing, but yeah. it's, like, it's almost like it's, like, it's, like, games that are about sort of more, like, intimate dynamics, like two people falling in love or two people in some kind of intense relationship. Um, you'll find a lot of that kind of you thing. You know, I played itch. an intense relationship game with Dr. Glory Hog, and I was like, you know, the whole thing is, like, you're in this relationship together, and then, like, you work your way out and stuff, and you guys can win, and... He, of course, found the only way to win on his own. So <laughs> I was like, come on. Probably. <laughs> Dr. Gloria. I think Bluebeard's Brides work as a two player game, I think, if you wanted yeah. to. It would just be oh, less about yeah. the different aspects of the personality and more about running through. That would Bluebeard's be interesting. Castle. That would be interesting. All right. Well, as far as <clears throat> this particular RPG goes. The whole point of the show is, would you back it or would you not? Now, you guys back a lot of RPGs. You guys play a lot of RPGs. Does this make your list of RPGs that you want to get? Like, and why, you know? So, Brendan, we'll start with you. Well, you know, I'm probably going to pass on this one. Uh, I kind of noted at the front end how slick it was. And to be totally honest, it's a little too slick for my taste. Um, I also have, like, about 10,000 cyberpunk-style <laughs> RPGs already. And so the question really is, like, uh, do I need another one? 
um, if, you know, I get some word of mouth, because this thing is going to fund and it's going to have like a million backers, and uh, that's not a literal million, just like, you know, a biblical million. And um, if, if it gets back to me that it's like an amazing game, then of course I'll check it out. Uh, but as for Kickstarter, I'm going to let this one pass. What do you think, Adam? Totally, I find this one very interesting. It reminds me a lot of another game that I already own called Eclipse Phase, which is also about re-sleeving and kind okay. of immortality and changing your bodies and a very cyberpunk kind of dystopian future where Earth was ravaged by all of these rogue AIs that destroyed it and now you're kind of living out in the Coupier Belt or Mars or somewhere else. And it's also very investigative -y and detective -y and it's a little weirder than this because in this one you re-sleeve into human bodies and that one you can re-sleeve into a sentient swarm or like an octopod creature. Oh, that's crazy. <laughs> Before I would back this, I would probably want to interact with the the 65 page or whatever it is page right, starter right. set, run it and see if I uh, how it plays and then I would probably be happy to back it because I also have a thousand cyberpunk RPGs. But I'm always like... looking out for a thousand and one, a thousand and first one, the one I mean, that brings it all back. Like I'll be getting Cyberpunk 2077 when that comes out. You can always like sell one. You right. know, you can always be like, I have 100 and I can just get rid of one. People, I could do that. Man, people love future stuff. So for me in particular, I am a fan of Altered Carbon to start with. So I really think that that entity and idea and the way that they go into religion with everything and is it okay for you to go ahead and be re-sleeved and stuff and then... I just think it brought up a lot of really interesting questions and that is something I would like to explore because I like doing campaigns like that where there's like less dungeon crawl, more exploring cool stuff like in the mind, you know? So I'm interested in that. I think that, well, like you said, it was very slick, very well put together. It has this hazard system that I'm really excited about trying out because I've never personally sat down and played that particular system before, but again, it does. It makes complete sense to me. I'm going to say it's going to be easier to attract players to your table because you have an entity that is on Netflix. Yeah. It is a book. People know. Like, sometimes that just works for you. And you're going to yeah. get players to your table with something like this. You know, maybe somebody doesn't know as much about Shadowrun. Or it seems like an older system or something. Or maybe a system that you know, is more, I guess, uh, not as well known in a community that is not RPG based. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it makes sense. People like something that they can recognize. And right, Shadowrun has right. those goofy elves and stuff. Right. People, <laughs> people, people are, are like, like what? Ugh. We don't want to play with the elves. I don't want those elves. Oh, if we're me, in my... the new age, we want to be in the new age right now. <laughs> my today. second RPG was Star Wars from West End Games. So, <laughs> yeah, right. okay. really, right. I love interacting with intellectual properties I'm well familiar with. Well, so. I'm going to say I'd back this because mm. I this is one of the campaigns that I personally was most excited about because of the theme and everything. And learning more about the hazard system and everything was super exciting for me. And, yeah, I'm, I'm going to get people to my table with this. Like, it's going to be no problem. Next up, we have Cobwebs. So Cobwebs, Cobs yo. <laughs> Cobwebs is by World Champ Game Company and Exalted Funeral. It is a Nor horror setting, and it is GM list. So there's actually, like, a board that is out that you're going to be interacting with, which I thought was one of the most interesting parts of this particular campaign. Now, what were your guys' first impressions? So we'll start with Brendan. Well, uh, of all the things that we have on the docket today, uh, Cobwebs is like the most indie thing that we have here. There's kind of like a sliding scale with Trophy being kind of indie and like Hunter being like used to be maybe kind of indie. But this, but Cobwebs is like a legit indie style game and which means it's like high concept it's very experimental but then it's got like a bunch of stuff in it that's like ringing particular bells that i love like it's got a mystery element it's got spookiness it's got kind of impromptu narrative um these i mean the 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 design on it is obviously very compelling uh this is just the kind of thing that i see the kickstarter and immediately i get kind of start salivating you know what i'm saying <laughs> he starts salivating oh yeah you're like, <laughs> come on oh, man no, you, like, you're playing like oh, you're playing God. like you don't know what i'm talking about <laughs> i know you do you're always like oh yeah oh, let me check that like uh cardboard let me oh, check that, that account balance real quick <laughs> i know you're talking I, come on now <laughs> adam what did you think about this well first things first <laughs> I didn't know that this was an Exalted Funeral game when I saw it. Uh, there is a relationship that we have to Exalted Funeral. Uh, 
they have backed our, our Full Metal RPG podcast um, and have this sponsored it. So just to clear the air on that, we do know them. I I looked at this before I knew Exalted Funeral had anything to do with it. I typically don't watch the videos on these. So when I came back uh, and watched the video and, and like, I heard oh, the, the lightning and then I saw the Exalted yeah. Funeral logo came up, I was like, oh, yeah, yeah okay. Oopsie daisy. Yeah, oopsie. But this looks great. This is... Uh, one of my taglines on Full Metal RPG is, every game is a horror game. I say it quite often, <laughs> and this is very clearly a horror game, a dark, investigative horror game. Your friend is missing. It hits all the right notes for me tonally. I love the little skull dice. I think the drop cloth is a neat idea. You know, I'm really excited about this. I think it's just a cool, kind of punk aesthetic, very mm -hmm. DIY. Mm -hmm. The gm -less thing speaks to me. It's a different kind of game than I traditionally see, and I always like those different kind of games. I liked Shadowrun Anarchy a lot because it was a twist on Shadowrun. Um, you know, there's a whole... there's a, I could just go through a whole bunch of RPGs that really kind of hit that note for me. But this really speaks to me just kind of... It has that really dark uh, DIY kind of indie aesthetic that I love to see. Have you guys played the cult RPG, Walters? Walters is asking if anybody's uh, played. I have not played before. I can't say I've played. I own it, and uh, I'm very familiar with it. So, like, you know, I'm very into it. I love, I love Colt. Yeah, very I, cool. I yeah. backed it very heavily. I yeah. have it. I wanted to run it. Yeah. But it's, typically when I run things, I'm running them in the community. That's not a game that I was super comfortable just bringing out to the community <laughs> in a game store. Be like, hey guys. Yeah, and just being <laughs> on like, there's a flayed body, you know. It's just it, that's that's a tough sell. It's very hard to kind of go into a, a a gaming store or a con and run that in a room full of people and kind of go into the the gore and kind of squick that mm. that is part of the cult aesthetic and the cult. Uh, the, the whole cult experience. Really. Cult's one of the ones I went hard into the paint on on uh, Kickstarter. And yeah. I, I backed that thing You're hard. Like, I backed all of it. I got hard. It all. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. Well, with Cobwebs here, I was particularly interested in this GM list system because personally, as a primarily a board gamer now, I can never. Like, I'm always doing one-shots, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm, like, sure. I'm always in that one-shot campaign, and then whenever I do one-shots, I'm always having to go ahead and put everything together on my own. And then, not that I don't love being, like, a GM, but I also want to play sometimes, you know? And oh, so yeah. I feel like this gives me the ability to also play and maybe bring it out a little bit more often. What are your guys' thoughts on that? You know, I used to be super skeptical of the uh, GM-free, like, indie game. Yeah. I was all like, well, I was like, oh, so, man, that's not even really like a role-playing game, right? But then um, I played a game called uh, Tall Pines with uh, Jason Corley uh, at New Mexicon in 2019. And um, that kind of, like, free-form narrative where there's not really, like a, like, a strong storyteller at the center of it where, like, everybody around the table is, like, working together to create the story, and the roles are switching, which is one of the features that this game has, like, control of the different of the different character elements actually moves around the table, so that you're creating, like, a fuller narrative that, like, has um, so much, like, different stuff in it. It, it. It's amazing, like, how working together without prompts, you'll still all be able to create a story that has, like, this dramatic and enriching kind of conclusion at the very end. So, um... I think it's cool. I think it's cool AF. I'll totally, totally, totally into it. So Adam Bass is in the channel right now. So if you guys have any questions about Cobwebs, make sure to ask them because he's here to help us out. So just a regular D12, Cobwebs share some DNA with Colt. When you seek the answer to a seemingly simple question, you find where are the secrets and darkness and more questions waiting for, for you. Sick. Yeah, I'm super down with that. Sick, I love it. That is, I mean, that's the whole reason why you play RPGs, like, is to get all that interaction and stuff. And, right. like, you, and it's one of those funny things, like, when you're DMing, it, even though you are providing, like, NPCs and stuff like that, the group really runs everything, you know, sure. and where they go and what they want to explore and what they get into and stuff like that. So they get to go down their own rabbit holes, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, I mean, I'm I'm partial to horror games overall. Yeah, me too, me too. And this, this game, I think it has, like, a lot of different elements that you can kind of choose how you mix them. Like, it's got this kind of... Uh, real world setting, it's got a conspiracy kind of angle to it, mystery, and then you can like add touches of sci-fi, supernatural, sort of to taste. And uh, I mean, that's 
that's that's a potent that's a that's a heady brew if you watched like uh fringe season one which was oh fringe season one was so good so, t so, so tight so good Why right did, oh. right but i mean so but good. fringe season one almost has a similar premise to this which yeah. is a person goes missing and then they have to go and, and, and the, every game of cobwebs to my understanding starts with the premise that someone is missing and then you go looking for them and it takes you you see the little spiral in this guy's eye and the play space has this spiral to it that like I love that that notion of the descent, you know, the descent into into darkness and kind of like having like ignorance revealed, you know. Yeah, probably some True Detective type of vibes in there too. If you ever watched season one of that. Oh yeah, well, totes, yeah. totes. Too much, were they were they looking for someone? Yeah. It was the, there was the kids who went missing, right? Oh, it was murders. It was yeah, murders. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Kabuki Kid loved Fringe as well. Like, I don't know who didn't like Fringe. Like, yeah, season one. Uh, well, season one was That's good. It. Season two was uh, okay. Season two, I thought was also Maze Balls. But then, like, it seems like after that, it started getting like. It got a little weird. I was like, okay, now where are they going? Oh, okay. Hold, hold on, hold on. Like, it was, it was too much. They should make a Fringe RPG though. Like cobwebs, I guess. Like, a, like uh, cobwebs. Uh, hey, Hold on. Hey, they already did. Adam, Adam's saying they it's did. a major touchstone for the design. Glad you caught that. Hey, you're welcome, man. Great minds think alike, brother. And the missing person is almost a pretense to the weirdness. Yeah. But I mean, think about how many role playing games start with a missing person uh, MacGuffin anyway. You know, I mean, like, how many times are you, like, playing D&D &D and, like, some wizard dude's like, well, I haven't heard from my friend in a while. I need you to go over there and check it out, That's you know? That's how Lost Minds of Fandelver starts. Is you it? gotta go find this guy is missing. You gotta go find some people. Find I thought some... it was all about the fat loots. <laughs> like, that's ah, like... <laughs> go retrieve this thing for me and you shall get treasure. <laughs> I thought that's how it goes. <laughs> or, or you mean we don't all meet in a tavern all the time? Like, you're not just in the tavern randomly no, hanging out? No. <laughs> oh, come no, on. Not all the time. Not most all the time? The, just most of the time. Some of it? <laughs> Alright, well... Would you guys back this campaign, Brendan? Clearly, yes. Uh, the fact of the matter is, is I have not yet backed it, just because I want to be able to come on here and say I'm going to back it. Right. So, like, I mean, that's what I do. Yeah, it's gonna. It's uh, <laughs> this game's getting my money. Uh, I'm really excited. Uh, you know, I've followed Adam's work for a while now. I followed Matt at Exalted Funerals' work for a while. It's just always great seeing these guys, you know, hit it out of the park again. So consider it backed. All right, Adam. I would back this as well. You'd back this, this really as well. This really all Very of the nice. things that I like to see in a game. Very nice. Okay, yeah. and this, guys, so for the PDF on this, it's $12, and then for an actual physical book, it's 25 This seems insanely inexpensive compared Dude. to some of these other ones. Yeah, it's like, a box. You get this whole box yeah. with all this stuff in it, 25 bucks. That's crazy. That's why the indie games, we love them. Because love them. Because you just get these big boxes, like, beneath and all these other ones, you just get... A smorgasbord of as, things. So back then. As a board gamer, this would have been at least thirty-five, forty dollars. <laughs> you would have had a piece of cardboard and stuff, and like all this stuff, it would have been crazy, you know. Like it's a fantastic price. Like even if you just want to do the twelve-dollar PDF and stuff, like that's that's awesome. The altered carbon one that we had looked at was twenty-five for the PDF and then fifty for the book. So, like. Why not at this point? Like, why not at least do twelve dollars and see what it's all about, you know? And then Ad I, I gotta ask Adam in the, yeah. in the stream. So, if they get the PDF, is the uh, dice drop uh, printable as opposed to the cloth? Because the dice drop is like an integral part of the system. So, right. I mean, I presume that I it would, is. Yeah, I would imagine it would be. But yeah, Adam can go ahead and answer that in yeah, the chat. Yeah. That would be super fantastic. Yeah. And he says, I'm never charging $50 for my games. We appreciate that because games should be for everybody, not just people who have the money to spend on all of them. Jeez, yeah, yeah. like so many Kickstarters <laughs> to back. Yes, it's a six-sheet printable that you tape it together. Okay, awesome. perfect. Awesome. Perfect. All right, so I want to read some of the comments here we have. KK, I would suspect those coworkers were from the alternate universe. Hmm. Which one were you talking about? Which coworkers? <laughs> The yeah. ones who didn't oh, know what fringe is. Oh, yeah, 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 fringe. Yeah, now I get it. Jeez, it's night. I'm slow, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and Alan says, we express cost in burritos for strategic games. That's true. So if you want the PDF copy of this, like, you could actually go out on a date, 
and you could get one burrito to share with somebody and then also play this game, okay? So, like, that's $20 date night right there, guys, wow. okay? Wow. Yeah. Like, isn't that amazing, right? That, okay. Yeah, yeah, that is interesting, the burrito economy that I was unfamiliar with. You will need with. a third person, burrito, which well, might make date night a little strange. They can but. bring their own snacks. They, they can, can bring their own snacks, okay? Yeah. <laughs> burrito economy is super important. you got to yeah. know how many peanut butter and jelly sandwiches you have to eat instead of burritos in order to pay for a game, okay? Oh, <laughs> fascinating. Are these fascinating. Chipotle burritos? They are oh. Chipotle burritos. Okay, because oh, yes. there's, there's the cheap, oh, no. like, dollar right. burritos well, at Del Taco. No. no, we're talking about Chipotle burritos okay. and without guac. No guac. Without right. guac. Yeah, guac is specific. Steak, it's like, fajitas, like we'll, not be, do, we'll not be doing that. We do the vegetarian ones, so okay. ours are always cheap. But <laughs> Well, then it comes with a lot. Dude, well, Adam, yeah. thanks for being on, man. Thanks for stopping by and, and taking the time. It was good seeing you, good interacting with you. Absolutely. We always appreciate anybody that shows up that is a designer or a publisher of a game and gives the people in our chat the details on everything that we we might have missed or that they have questions about that we can't answer. Like, we really appreciate that. Next up, we have Trophy, the RPG. This is by the Gauntlet Gaming Community. This is, let's see here, uh, this, this, this is a oh, strange yeah, this is, idea. This is the three books. Yeah. That's right. Okay, go ahead, Brendan. It's, th it's like three games in one, and uh, it, the game has been kind of slowly developed uh, on the Gauntlet kind of community over the course of years, and now uh, Jason Cordova is bringing it out. Uh, the, the design is uh, Jesse Ross. Uh, Lauren McManaman and uh, Ludvico Salves, um, but uh, they've all been kind of designing it together in these in these big three books because it's 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 kind of, the idea has metamorphed. Uh, book one, uh, Trophy Dark, is about uh, what you call what they call incursions, where you go into like right. you go into an area, a hostile area that doesn't want you there, and it's a horror game, a fantasy horror game where your characters are going to be destroyed by the end of it. And it's, a, it's about experiencing that destruction. Well, and it's those little, like, one-shots that they yes. say. They're like, this is the perfect one-shot book if yeah. you want one-shots, right? Yeah. And if you look at the Trophy Dark uh, description on here, there's a, a list of pre-generated incursions that, they, that, that it comes with, and they are awesome-sounding. They sound really, really good. Uh, the next book is Trophy Gold, which is meant to be played as a campaign, and is about exploring dungeons. And so it's not just it's not so much about your character being like immediately consumed by the environment that they're in. Uh, it's a bit more of a of a story arc game. However, the mechanic functions in such a way that the costs of being a dungeon delver are so great that it's always like pushing your characters to take more and more dangerous risks. Okay. Uh, so it's it's really both of those games are designed to sort of increase this like this heightened sense of fear of the unknown that you would experience if you were like a, a dungeon explorer, or an adventurer, as it were. Uh, the last book that it comes with is Trophy Loom, which is the setting that they have kind of like world built together over right. on the gauntlet. And so if you want to play in that setting, you can either use the trophy games to play in that setting or it's system agnostic. So you could conceivably play it with any you know fancy RPG that you have. I really like the fact that they do have the books separated. And when I first got into this, I didn't think I was going to. I was going to be like, ah, oh, why are they doing three books? Like, this is a bunch of crap. Just put it in one book. And then once I started reading over it, I was like, oh, wait a second. This actually kind of makes a lot of sense. <laughs> yeah, it, it really does. I mean, you can't fault the organization of it. And then you can't fault the execution. I mean, like, I've been listening to the Gauntlet series of podcasts kind of talk about this game and its development for a long time. Listen to Jason Cordova talk about it quite a bit. And I always thought, oh, yeah, that sounds cool. It'd be really nice if that just came out in a little $20 soft cover. Uh, and then when I heard about the price point on this thing, I was like, yikes, I don't know about all that. <laughs> that seems like a lot. Uh, but when you see the execution, you're just like, you're like oh, God. Oh, oh, those are like art books. You know, they're not. They're like role-playing books and art books. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? You appreciate all the art in them, then. Like, oh. you're like, oh, it really helps you get into the world, and it's good to be able to open up a book and show a picture and be like, look, yeah. here. This yeah. is what I'm talking about right here. <laughs> Just look how, I mean, the attention to detail, the immersiveness, the, the, the kind of heart that has gone into the production of these books, it's, it's 
This is outstanding. This is just out. I mean, look at look how look at the tasteful photography. I mean, come <laughs> on, you know. Like, Those mm, books look hot right gauntlet. now. Oh my god. <laughs> gauntlet, man. Never made paper look so good. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, because you know Jason Cordova. He's like he's he's a, he's an Epicurean. He's I think I heard him on the Gauntlet podcast talking about this. And he's like, we're gonna have creamy, heavy paper, and you're just like, oh. Oh that have wow. A huh? Wow. That's not have a watermark. Have a watermark. <laughs> I can't believe I started this. If it doesn't have a watermark, then I don't even know what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> well, Adam, what do you think about this? Aesthetically, this reminds me a lot of other dark fantasy games that I have, like Shadows of the Demon Lord or Shadows of Esterin. I get a very Shadows of Esterin vibe just from the covers of these. Like, like you could have put Shadows of Esterin on the cover of any one of these, and I would have thought it was Shadows of Esterin. Book. Yeah. Um, you know, production value wise, can't fault it. Looks really good. It clearly has a pedigree. Uh, is the type of fantasy that I'm interested in dark fantasy? Other than, you well, know, I'm not big into that gilded heroic fantasy of Dungeons and Dragons. I like grittier type of heroes. I like low fantasy type of gaming, and this definitely looks like it would scratch that itch. So, Doctor Glory Hog is asking, does it have that American Psycho paper? That one, was the right? watermark reference oh, I was making. <laughs> So good, good and catching. Pull that. it out. Yeah. Let's well, see it. How did you get so tasteful? Right. <laughs> yeah. So look at, the, look at this. Look at this. Just let your eyes rest upon that for a second. It does look really good, guys. They have, deeply immersive. Right. Just as you're reading the pages, I mean, in most books, you know, you have all the text and stuff, and you might see a picture or whatnot. But like this, looks like you were sitting there, and the sword sitting on the table, and like you're getting the aspects of the game. The pages have like the little droplets and stuff on it, the ink drops and everything. It really is. It's very, very nice. Yeah, it like would clearly draw you in. You, you it's know, meant to. You know what just struck me is um, I was listening to a podcast and uh, Jesse Ross was talking about how this game was originally kind of conceived of as a hack of Symborum. And uh, they actually use the Symborum font on here. So oh, it's like, that's a little... to hey, kind of draw a little bit of hey. that in for all the RPG players. Yeah, okay. yeah. So that you can see the, you can see the uh, cross-pollination there. Mm -hmm. So we were talking a little bit about the fact that, okay, it's three books and the price points on it. So... Oh, boy. For the PDFs, it's... <laughs> what is it? It's, hold on. $30. Okay, for the PDFs, it's $30. That's the PDFs of... All of the books, you know. And okay. Then, and wait, then, wait, 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 wait. So $30, thirty dollars, you get all three books, or is that thirty in PDF? In form. PDF. Yeah, in PDF form. All right. The and this is how I thought it was interesting that they broke it up. Then they have like a forty dollar tier where like you get all the PDFs, and but then you get like one of the books. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, that's a really interesting way. So I feel like they might have tried breaking that up. Like they knew that was going to be an issue, and then they were like, okay, well, what, how do you guys feel about that? Like, is that a good move, or do, are you like, ah, we're going to buy everything anyway? Like, is that even <laughs> worth it? Like, I don't know. I have to have the dead tree versions. I need to know something the died for the yeah. game that I'm holding in my hands. Okay. And I really, I need that tactile feeling. I, I've i tried reading books on a Kindle and an I iPad. I don't like it. it yeah. I don't At this like point, it. I'm old. My eyes are bad. I have a very hard time with it. I really do kind of like that tactile experience, the smell, the touch, the feel of it. I want to interact with it as a physical object, so PDFs don't speak to me personally. Okay. What about yeah, you? Yeah, I also have a tough time with PDFs. Yeah. You know, like this whole thing where people are all like, oh, man, you get the book, and then there's like a pack-in PDF code, so you get the PDF too, and I'm just like, I don't care. <laughs> I often like pull those things out and just like throw them in the garbage. I'm never going to use them for anything. Do you know how many anything. PDFs I have stored on some drive somewhere yeah. and I don't even look at? You don't even I look mean... at them. <laughs> right? I love having the book in my hand. I do too. Like, yeah. I want to... And especially, like, because you can mark pages and stuff like that. And you're like, okay, I'm going to put my notes here and stuff and get back to that. Or I want to reference this later. Like, I always love having the book. And then, like, what I end up using the PDFs for is there's another player who cannot purchase the book because of some reason. I'm like, hey, here's some PDFs to help you out. But that's the only time sure. I ever end up ever sure. using them, you know? And ev it seems like the majority of role players do the books. Like, do you know how many people do you know do just PDFs? I think that PDFs are like more f for people who are younger than us, which I'm not really? trying to say that we're old. I'm oh I'm we not are. old. Oh wait, <laughs> no wait. Uh, but I feel like uh, people who are in their 20s or in their teens really interact with PDFs very well. 
I remember there was one time I was uh, running a game at a con. It was like a bunch of teenage kids. And I was like, now I only have one copy of the book. And they were on their phones and they're like, got it. Oh, <laughs> got like, it. Done. Got it. Okay. And then like, I was just like, all right. Okay, then. Like, I am so... too old for this world. I think that with these particular books, though, it would be lost having it in PDF form yeah. because of the detail that they put in these guys. And I'm sorry for anybody who specifically likes PDFs. It looks like so, most of you here don't like PDFs and like dead trees anyway. So, yeah. yeah, I think it would almost be sad not to have them in book form, which means... Yeah, on the dice. Yeah, well, I mean, oh. this is another one of those slay you with add-ons, Kickstarters. Oh, my God. Um, they look amazing, though. Yeah, I mean, this is... Okay, look, this Kickstarter... <laughs> the, the Be prepared to open your pockets <laughs> on this show, guys. Like, it gets rough in here, okay? <laughs> the, 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 the space that this Kickstarter occupies is part of this new wave of role-playing where it's yes. kind of like fine things, you know? I think yeah. we kind of saw this kind of enter the public, like, imagination with Invisible Sun, where they were like, $500 to play a role-playing game. Can you afford it? And they, oh actually, were like, they actually were like, <laughs> split it with your friends. And we were all chortling, like, oh, yeah, I'm going to split a role-playing game with my friends. Give me a break. But um, to me, I don't know if necessarily the model of, like, a very fine uh, role-playing experience, like, speaks to me. To me, you know, role-playing games are about, like, beat-up, soft-cover books and... You know, pencils that get kind of worn down and hanging out at the library and trying to keep it down so the librarian doesn't yell at you. You know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. I mean, I have a very kind of like like homey, like working class kind of feel about my role playing. Let's say lower middle class because I don't know what working class people <laughs> yeah, have. That's kind of, yeah, it's kind say, of it's yeah. a bougie hobby, kids. A I, bougie I, I, hobby. I, I get it. Wow. Bust out the I get it. Here. <laughs> Dick Van Dyke. Yeah, when I was uh, working the mines in Manchester, <laughs> the only things that kept me going was role playing. Sweeping <laughs> chimneys and running. Role playing games. He's made wow. life, Gov. Wow, yeah, <laughs> that's what. Uh, that's what. Uh, what's his name? It was, it was his name like Dick, old Dick, or something weird. So I can't remember the the character. What? The Mary Poppins character. It's sing the name. Oh, it's, oh yeah, yeah. It's just the, the chimney like, sweep guy. Chimney yeah, sweep. yeah. I don't know he has, he has a name. A name. Yeah. I'm sure, he has a name. Does Does he? We just call him the chimney sweep guy. I know. What do I know about anything? I just failed my Mary Poppins lore check, guys. Critical fail. <laughs> so Alan says, I'm still a dice sucker, and I totally agree. If you could see what I'm looking at right now, you would be super excited, Alan. I have tons of dice in front of me. So what do you, and this is like, I'm just going off into like craziness about this campaign right now. What do you yeah. guys think about the cards in this? Oh, oh, Dr. Glory Hawk, Whoa, hi. Hey, oh, hey, just, hey, oh, 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 no. this is oh, no. oh, <laughs> I'm like Mike Wachowski. <laughs> Just, I don't exist. So, since we have a lot of maybe people who not have not played RPGs in our chat, what do you guys think about having cards that do have references on them that you can just toss out or shuffle through or maybe prepare ahead of time that you're like, all right, these are the monsters we're fighting or possibly NPCs? Like, how do you feel about that? <laughs> I am a sucker for cards. Are you? All okay, right, me too. Right. Okay, I, me too. Okay. I get cards when there's <laughs> cards because I am a sucker for cards. Dice, not so much. Miniatures, not so much. Cards, cards? I'm just like, I'm, I got to have cards. <laughs> They're played. They're played. I gotta have it. It's played. It's a play. I don't want to be. I don't want to be looking up on a chart, man. I yeah. Got cards, right? right. And then you can hand it to players and be like, "See, it's like that. It's like that. See." Yeah. <laughs> I'm not, Look I'm at not, this. This is what it looks like. I'm not gonna lie. I am a compulsive buyer of things, and when I'm a completionist, <laughs> and when I buy a role playing game, I like to buy everything. Right. So, okay. like for instance, I got the Elysium game from uh, Free League from Mutant Year Zero, right? And uh, there were some kind of cards or whatever that came with that. But um, I bought them, right? But that having been said, it's like we're enough in the industry now and we kind of know what goes on behind the scenes to the point that I know what it costs them to make a deck of those cards. And let me tell you, man, that is one of those margin monsters. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because the amount of money that it costs to produce a deck of cards versus what you charge for it is bonkers. Right, it's right. It's bonkers. So okay. I feel like we're seeing like a lot of cards coming out for a lot of games. Maybe they don't all need them. I really like the fact that the eight hundred dollar pledge is just called desperate. <laughs> it's like, Did you say eight hundred dollar pledge? For I didn't this. scroll down that far. If I was like, oh god. There <laughs> <laughs> was, was a five thousand. You're like, oh my god, what? 
There was a five thousand dollar pledge on uh, on Elder Carbon, and two people had bought it. I was like, and you're like, what? It's, it's like you can go to LA and play Elder Carbon with people who play Elder Carbon on the internet. And I'm like, you got five thousand dollars for that? Here, if you one of those people shoot. is Jeff Bezos. You know it, is. it has to be. Here, He's if like, you spend three hundred fifty, you're doomed. I want to get, get to the one where you get all the books. Okay, so all three I books. Could, I thought you could just get them for a hundred. Hundred and fifty, all three books. Let's go up. Okay, so for all three books. This. Yeah, and then the PDFs. Yeah, and, but you right. got to get the cards, and you got to get the. But dice, you don't got to right? get the. You, you don't. You got to get the cards. Those are just. You got to get the dice. Those just make playing the game easier. I mean, you don't actually need them. Okay, so and then the hundred and fifty dollar pledge has all the dice and everything. So. We, well, one thing we didn't talk about is a little bit is the setting in this game because we totally got sidetracked by like art and like cool sure. other mm -hmm. freaking paper stuff and everything. Right. It's As you you're treasure hunters and you're going like into a forest or something mm -hmm. and the whatever's in the forest and everything is just basically attacking you. Like right. they don't want you going anywhere. So right. a little bit of like grim fairy tale-ish sort of bit to it, right? So we have, you guys remember Critical Role Kickstarter, right? Couple grand to meet the crew. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. Maybe you should move into Cheap Starter. Shade. <laughs> Shade has been thrown. MM, you need to start Cheap Starter, and then everybody can list like $20 games on there. Like, that's a gold mine <laughs> for you right now. You need to do that. I would visit Cheap Starter, would you guys? I would. Right? Well, you know, I just spend a lot of time on itch.io. Right. And that's all PDFs, so womp womp. But if there was uh, cheap <laughs> cheap physical copies, <laughs> I'd be there. And Dr. Glory Hawk says, does this game come with an RPG? <laughs> 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 oh, good, you're on it. Perfect. That's exactly what we need, MF. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, would you guys back this game? Who wants to go first? Look, I desperately want to back this game, okay, okay? okay? I desperately want to, but you have to understand, like a fiend, I have many hobbies. <laughs> I have many, I have, like my veins are just being tapped by so many things at any given moment. And, uh, like as, as exciting as I think this project is for a hundred dollar buy-in, and, and the thing is, is that, that they've talked about like, oh, well, don't sleep on these prices because when you see this yeah. at a con, it's going to be more up. expensive. Yeah, yeah we're, I think we're looking at at least 150 to buy all three if you go to a con. And I think there's probably going to be a slip case or something eventually. Uh, but I don't know, man. I, it's, it's not in my budget right now. Not in your budget. Um, okay. Adam. I feel like I have enough games that are similar to this already between Low Fantasy Gaming, Labyrinth Lord, Shadows of Esteran, Shadows of the Demon Lord. That I could run something very similar if I wanted to without having to spend an additional hundred dollars. Okay. I, I, I like it. If you don't have something like this, I would recommend it. It looks cool. Right. Um, and I love the aesthetic. I love the design. But personally, as a fiend for these type of games and having so many of them already, it's just, do I really need it? <laughs> you, 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 you want to know I what want though? it. But I don't know if I need it. This this train of logic, because mm -hmm. the thing is, is I actually want this game more than games I have sitting on my shelf. Mm -hmm. So this train of logic that you've introduced me to, where you're like naming all these games mm -hmm. that I own, and I'm mm -hmm. like, if I go home and I throw those on eBay tonight, oh, then you, you can, can get money this. for this. I can buy this. <gasps> you could. So oh, I think you may have converted me to a. You've converted you're me like, to a boom, back. You're like, boom, done. All right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there you go. Because yeah, I think I'd rather play this. So Dr. Glory. That's a weird way to close the sale. Right. <laughs> Said you got all that money for hair products, then you could afford one more RPG. Great jeans, bro. Luxurious the, the secret, hair. The secret is genetics. <laughs> Both genetics. my brothers are bald. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I go over to the house to see my brothers, I'm like, <laughs> is that why you keep it so long? Just so you can be like, oh no, and no. When you know. go over. I keep mine short because there's too much gray in it. So yeah. gotta, gotta hide it. <laughs> gotta well, do something. I'm seeing all of these different pledge tiers for this game, and the one tier that I am not seeing that I really want is just the ability to just get the one buck, because I just want the one that gives you just the little, like, where you can do, like, one-shot things and stuff. Like, that's... Dark. Trophy dark. Right. Mm. Like, that's what I actually want, because, again, coming from the side of where most of my hobby is right now, which is in board games, and then not having enough time to do a whole bunch of RPGs all the time... Like, that's right up my alley, and I'm actually kind of sad to see 
where, okay, I can get $30 in the PDF version, which I don't like PDFs, mm -hmm. and then my next tier is $40 where I can get, you can get one a, physical copy of a book. Yeah, you get hardcover of Trophy Dark, though. Right, but I, mm. I don't want, I, don't, I just want the one hardcover book. I want one hardcover oh, book for 25 bucks, 30 bucks, or whatever. Okay. Not the I don't want anything else. I just want it to be a little less expensive. That's all I'm saying. Like, if, if they were like, all right, you can get one hardcover book for 30 bucks or 25 bucks or something like that without all the other PDFs and everything, I would have been totally fine with that. That may be about what it runs, though, because for $100 for three, they're coming in at 33 bucks a piece, and you're just getting a discount because you're buying all of them. So forty dollars for one hardcover may be close maybe to where what it, it is. Yeah, okay. that may be what it is. Okay, all right. Well, maybe maybe that's it then. I'm just like I just want. I'm just I mathing don't know. that out. I don't know. How dare you use math <laughs> against me? How dare you? That's Curses. it. That's it. We're moving Foiled on. Foiled by math. <laughs> All right, and then the last RPG that we have up here, if it plays, there we go, is Hunter the Vigil, second edition. This is by Onyx Path Publishing. This is a re, well, not, I was going to say rehashing, but like an updated version of the Hunter and World of Darkness series and everything in it. Uh, I was talking a little bit about you guys before. I was like, well, what's the difference in this one versus the other ones? I mean... As Hunter the Vigil, that is a system that I liked playing because I personally liked... I mean, it's fun to play Vampire the Masquerade and stuff, or Werewolf or anything like that, where you're this big powerful thing, but this brings that horror aspect back to it where you're like, oh my god, like everything out there is scary and going to kill me. Mm -hmm. Like, that's horrible. But what are the changes? Adam. So this is the second edition of their Chronicles of Darkness. It's actually a line that's separate and distinct from the World of Darkness proper, which is owned by White Wolf. Onyx Path owns Chronicles of Darkness. Chronicles of Darkness is similar to the old Vampire the Masquerade, but it's Vampire the Requiem. You'll right. see similar terms like Ventru, but then there's new and Gangrel, but there's new things like Deva and Mechit that are different. Werewolf is now Werewolf the Forsaken, not the Apocalypse. Mage is no longer Mage the Ascension. It, they've changed everything just enough. Uh, as far as this, they've kind of gone through and altered the rules for second edition to where they streamlined, the, or they, uh, they redid the social system. I won't call it streamlining it. I don't necessarily love what they did with it. And they changed some of the uh, problematic little add-ons that were in the game and some of the skills that were kind of game-breaking in the older editions. They just kind of went through and revamped all of the game lines. This is, of course, the Hunter game line where you're playing humans, fighting against monsters. The basic premise of this, as far as I can tell, or what they've done to the setting, is they're saying there's more monsters than ever now. You thought there were a lot of monsters before. Wait till you see how many monsters there are now, and you have to go out and and keep your neighborhood safe from them. They've also taken the slasher content that was a separate book that I really highly recommend and loved for the old line okay. and integrated it into this book itself. So that's no longer a separate book, but it was a great book and a real value add if you were going to play Hunter the Vigil. Yeah, that uh, slasher game was like the standout of the first edition Hunter the Vigil line, mm -hmm. and it was like a notoriously good book in that community. I think it's important to remember that the... Hunter, the original Hunter the Visual is now 10 years old. When I saw that on the Kickstarter, I read that on the Kickstarter, and I was like, like, oh, crap, I was like, what? oh, God, what I'm old. Where'd my life go? <laughs> um, and subsequently, they've gone through a second edition of the Chronicles of Darkness line where they did tighten up the rules. And on some level, one of the things that they did that kind of bothers me is they kind of gamified a lot of stuff. There's this, there was an mm -hmm. era of um, design that kind of came out of that production studio where they were like, Let's turn everything into dice rolling systems. And despite the fact that many of the systems are very tight in the second edition um, and well written and the games are more focused and, and they have like, I, I say that they've like winnowed away some of the weaker ideas and focused, doubled down on the strongest ideas. The concept of just a game where you're rolling a ton of dice for everything, like, oh, I, I want to see if the valet will... You know, get my car, I'll oh, roll for it. That's a social challenge. You know what I'm saying? I mean, part of the fun of role-playing is, is being in the character and interacting, getting to do this, like, narrative stuff. Why does it? Why does everything have to be a die roll? You know, why, why can't you just have, like, some of that, that ad hoc kind of impromptu theater that made the original White Wolf games, like, so fun? You know what I'm saying? The good thing about, though, rolling all of the dice is that, like, 
there's something exciting about having all of those dice or even like being on the other side of that screen hearing the you know like the gm be like <laughs> and you don't know how many they're dropping, but you're like, ooh, that sounded like a lot of dice. Oh, like that's not good. That's not good. That's not good. There it is. When it, when it ratchets tension, I think having a lot of dice and using the dice for what they're for, which is creating that element of suspense and tension, is important. But there also comes a point where it's just kind of like, I don't really care about, you know, if, if you go up to some guy on the street and go, I put a gun to his head and I pull the trigger, I don't really need you to roll for Okay, Right, you you're like, him. you're he's right dead. there. Like, he's right. dead, done. Yeah, he's dead. Done's up. You, you, you <laughs> did that. Okay, cool. You know, now why? And we'll kind of explore that. So Martin says, I played so much of World of Darkness back in college, the good old days, and we played a bunch of, what is it, Vampire the Masquerade back in the day. That was our, that was super our jam. And for sure. MM is all about talking about Dr. Glory Hog in the channel saying, Okay, you play cashier and I'll play the big bad wolf and how that's an adult game. <laughs> so <laughs> Yeah, I don't oh, know that one. Kind of role don't know that one, guys. Uh, Ag yeah. Again, MM, go with that. Like you can put that up on your cheap <laughs> starter, okay? And you make like a little twelve dollar <laughs> manual for that, okay? <laughs> Me a whole thing about the Grim Fairy Tale series, okay? <laughs> and let's see here. So, the only thing that I'm thinking about this particular campaign, this is last on our list. Yeah. And I love the world. Somehow, this is the least exciting one that I've came to. Like, oh, as the, the end of this, I'm like, yeah, this is going to be exciting. And I'm like, but all those other ones had so many other really cool things attached to it. Like, they didn't do anything different, and I'm wondering if, overall, that is going to catch up to some of the long-term entities like this, and the fact that they're not changing enough of things, or that they're not adding enough of things. What do you guys think about that? I think you're hitting the nail on the head here, which yeah. is that uh, we're kind of looking at some of these uh, World of Darkness concepts, and they're starting to feel kind of tired, and they're right. starting to feel kind of played out. Like just a one and, rehashing of it, and like, oh, yeah. it's like a little different. And, and, and if you go up and you see how much they pledged, right? Like this, this is this game was not like a insignificant game. This game has a following. It has a cult. Oh, absolutely. And this is not the kind of um, money that they are used to generating. This is this is while they've met their funding goal very easily. This is not um, like where they are used to living when they do one of these. Right. And I think it's showing a kind of weariness for this material that, like, I mean, because at this point it's like been like what thirty years of a kind of like a formula of how they release these games and what is in them. And uh, we're living in this golden age of RPGs. People are yeah, innovating all right? the time. They're always doing new stuff. And always, yeah. like, the boards and stuff. And, like, the fact of the, having those three books. And, like, they're going to play to different aspects of different people that want to play different things during that. Yeah. And all these new systems that are out and everything. It's maybe getting a little out of date, you mm -hmm, know? Like, mm -hmm. it needs some serious revamping, maybe. And it's... Revamping. Well, ah. Ah. <laughs> The law protects yes. me. The law protects yes. me. What, what I feel has hurt them a lot is they have split the line. Okay. Because now there is a Vampire of the Masquerade 5th edition. There's yes. a Vampire of the Requiem 2nd edition. There's a Mage, the Ascension 20th Anniversary edition. They're coming out with all of these games that now share the same space that compete against each other. And... If I want the Nostalgia Bomb, I'll go get the older version. If I want this, I have Hunter the Vigil First right. Edition already. I've got all these. It's not changed enough that it's compelling to me to go invest in this heavily as a concept, even yeah. with the changes that they've made to the setting. Uh, you know, with the Chronicles of Darkness, they at least kind of brought in the God Machine Chronicle stuff and integrated that in, and I felt like that was at least innovative enough for me to pick it up. But with this, I just kind of look at it and go, eh, okay. It's... So we have Martin here that says, I think some of the world of darkness is tied to the times. I'm not sure how well it really translates to 2020 from back in the 90s. And that's a really good and interesting idea as well. That's fair. Yeah. I've heard that criticism. I think it's fair. I, I think that horror gaming is something that's, that's fun and exciting. But I think you have to have a novel approach. And I think you have to have new tech and, and you do. People want to experience. They don't want to experience the same thing over and over again. And I, I, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna stick to my guns here. Sorry, but I just really, <laughs> I really think that these 
releases have become very, very formulaic. Well, if you read Cult and the Black Madonna, it is very much a product of the 90s. It feels very 90s, and that's the new edition of, of Doesn't it Cult take place in the 90s? Yeah, though? Doesn't it the Black does. Madonna take place it in the does, 90s? But that's the thing, is it's just, they didn't, they didn't do Uplift either. They were just kind of, okay, here it is, and it's well, set in the 90s, and that's what it is. Then would you guys back this campaign? Negative. It's like cricket, yeah, I'm cricket, let, I'm cricket. Go. The last one that I backed from them was the Changeling one. I got it. I flipped through it. They didn't really change enough for me to, and so I just kind of said, okay, I, I think my time with this is is done. I have these books. Yeah. And, and if I want them, they're on my shelf. Okay. I, I, at least when they did the uh, Mummy, uh, the Curse or whatever, right? Uh, second edition, which was just like seriously like a month or two ago. Um, yeah. I heard some developers talking about it, and I actually backed that one because it seemed like their approach to the game had changed, and that they had a bunch of new tech in it, and I okay. liked the new vision. Uh, but on this, nah, this is just reads as stale to me. I'm gonna let it go. Yeah, I thought overall that I was going to be really excited about this particular book because I really enjoy the whole world with this. And after going through all of the exciting other Kickstarters that we went through today, it really does, it kind of just falls flat. And I want something new and fresh and exciting, not necessarily, I mean, like the same sort of world, but I want something, I just want something newer. You know what I'm saying? I just want something that oh, ups it's, its level. As you even look at this Kickstarter page, we have like five pictures or something like there's nothing about this Kickstarter page that is super super exciting to me as or is like super eye-catching or anything like there's nothing that hypes me mm -hmm. I will say so, as someone who wants to who likes hunter games and everything the image of the guy with the scales really was kind of off-putting to me because really? I'm going I thought he was just he's up for I'm that. assuming it's armor yeah. right but it's, it's gotta be armor no it's on his actual skin it doesn't look like it's armor it's above this keep this guy yeah it, it oh, looks yeah, like it's like just integrated skin? with the skin and yeah it, it just doesn't it's, am i playing a monster like human too? hybrids or something or... you get your blade style thing half human half something weren't going there, after yeah. things weren't there dudes that like injected monster powers into themselves so that they could like fight you with monster powers oh, or yeah, something yeah, yeah. in this game i think I that that know. might i can't remember if i'm like just ripping that off out of rippers i feel like that might be rippers i know rippers. that was a lot in hunter the reckoning had a lot of those you have supernatural powers to fight the monsters at their own yeah. game like I have my crowbar of smiting or whatever, but yeah, it, I don't know. I have this game. I don't really need this. And then in the comments, we have them talking basically about, you know, the fact that in that 90s era and stuff like that, you don't have a whole bunch of cell phones. You don't have as much technology as we do today and stuff and how that affects the game. And that really sure. does. It really does, you know? Mm -hmm. Sure. I mean... We have so much technology today. There's cameras everywhere, and it does make it maybe a li little less exciting, you know? I don't know. I don't know. I feel like there's a lot of space to work that kind of thing into the story. Because yeah. I do think that, like, we, we despite the fact that uh, we have a lot of technology around us, I don't think that that means that we don't live in scary times. We live in very scary times. And That's I think there's, true. There's a lot of fuel there. You just have to do the work. Okay. And, you know, figure it out and write it, you know? Well, the... Base price for the PDF on this is $25, and then if you want to get the book, the actual physical copy, it is $50. You know, luckily, it seems like, for the most part, most of the RPG companies stay within, like, the same price points for things, which is kind of nice, because that's not the way it happens with board games, which is like, <laughs> you can have a $10 game, and then you can have a $250 game, and you're like, wow, that is a big spread here, guys. <laughs> What am I going to spend my money on? So at least if you enjoyed any of the RPGs today, you can get a PDF copy that at least tried out and stuff. So what were your guys' favorite RPG that we talked about today? Cobwebs. 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 Cobwebs okay. for sure. Right. Cobwebs for sure. 100%. Straight up buying cobwebs. Tro trophy, trophy, we're going to have to trophy see how those, was interesting. those yeah. eBay sales mm -hmm. come in. Mm -hmm. And Altered Carbon, I mean, right from the get-go, I wanted to back Altered Carbon because of the story and stuff that I wanted with it, but, I mean, Trophy and Cobwebs really, after delving into them, they, I'm like, oh, I'm going to be backing so many things. I'm so <laughs> sorry, Dr. Glory Hog. I'm I so sorry. Download and run Altered Carbon and see how it goes. Okay. I'd All love right. to play in that. So. Okay. All right. Well, 
Do we have anything else? Does anybody else have any comments for us today? Thanks for another perspective. I have to miss the regular show tomorrow due to a work meeting. That sucks. You tell your work to change that meeting, Alan. <laughs> Have you guys thought of doing a show on RPG accessories? A lot of good stuff out there. That is a really interesting idea, possibly, because you know what we have right here? We have dice. So this was by that's Poly a, Hero. That's a dice. Yeah, ha! this is a dice. It looks like a lockpick, guys, and you spin it, and then it has your little number that it shows in there and everything. So believe me, I have plenty of accessories <laughs> that I could show you guys. But that would be really interesting as well. And let us know in the comments, guys, which RPG campaigns you might be backing. And if you guys like the show, because this is new for us. Did you guys, what do you, what do you guys think talking to our viewers and stuff like that? Did you guys have fun? Yeah, this was great. Was great. Yeah, I had a blast. Good. I had a blast. This was your yeah. first time doing live stuff? For, well, yeah, yeah, it was. The viewers will have Actually. to let us know how we did. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I have no ability to self-reflect. So. You're like, give us a rating in the comments. Yeah. So like one through five, how did each person do? And then they'll review later. There okay, guys? <laughs> so where can we check you guys out at if we want to get a hold of you? Well, we do the Full Metal RPG podcast. So that podcast is available Wherever you get your podcasts, uh, right now we're based on Podbean, but you can find us on iTunes, the iTunes player, uh, you can find us on Stitcher, and you can find us on just whatever the big, like, scrapers are. Fair warning, the language on that can get a little salty at times. <laughs> just calling that out. 18 you know. Thank you so much. 18 yeah. plus Eight, listen to that. That's right, 18 uh, plus on that, guys, okay? We also do Instagram to a great other extent. That's at Full Metal RPG on Instagram. Uh, uh, we have we're on Facebook. Find us on Facebook. Like us there. Oh, and then we have a Discord. Come to hang out on our Discord. That's a tiny URL. That's awesome. Full Metal Discord, I oh, think. You, mm -hmm. Yeah. You guys are getting good ratings here. Like, okay, so that was great. Oh. Thanks a lot. You guys are natural, says Walters. We have a five five I and a that. one for the glory hog. Oh, <laughs> uh, burned. <laughs> Burninated. And Battlecry is saying that I hope Cyberpunk 2077 will ignite some interest in the RPG again. Break the internet. Oh, it already Cyberpunk has. It already has. Cyberpunk Red is like super hot. The Jumpstart box you can get at your friendly local game store. Super great. And then I was at Gen Con last year and I saw a ton of new stuff that they have coming out. It looks very good, very exciting right. product. Cyberpunk so hot right now. It's so hot. Cyberpunk Keanu Reeves, is so just all that hot stuff. right now. Oh my god! <laughs> I get a ten out of five. Alan says, "Doctor Glorhog." And Adam, where? Uh, what is your Instagram? Because you do you do fantastic art. Adam so. dot sync on Instagram. That's so right. At Adam dot sync. I love looking at the art that you do. Oh, it's fantastic. And then uh, do you also do the scorpions? On I Instagram? also do the scorpions. Yeah, the scorpions. Yeah. I also watch. <laughs> Like watching the scorpion I go adventures. And hunt scorpions <laughs> during the summer because they are early. So. <laughs> well, thank you everybody who hung out with us today and chatted. We hope that you guys go ahead and go out there and play an RPG, like get some knowledge on that and everything. And we will talk to you guys all tomorrow for our RPG show. Or not RPG show. Yeah. Oh my god. For our board game show. <laughs> and if back we do that another RPG show, we'll That's right. more knowledge in your heads. That's so. right. We're hoping to make this a thing. So we will see you guys later.